When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Uh, Money is a relationship. So if you are in sacrifice, you tend to attract all the dramas that you go, you have to go into sacrifice. So unless you change what's inside, outside cannot be changed. That's why I use a lot of Zen mechanism, uh, because a lot of uh, our issues are running automatically, subconsciously. So you have to really uh, come from a different approach. Numbers will not solve the problem. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. Have you ever tried to achieve a money goal and felt like you just never going to make any progress? Or do you cringe anytime something comes out of the blue that you just need to spend money on? Or do you walk around feeling completely uneasy about your money situation? Hey, look, if you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. You see, money is about more than numbers. It's about our very complex relationship with money that was truly set in motion before we were even born, believe it or not. And all these years, you've been collecting information about how you think, act, and feel about money. And this information has been working like somewhat in the background without feeling like you have any control. As our much beloved guest, Ken Honda says, It's like you have mold in you that attracts a certain relationship with money. Until you recognize it and start to make changes, nothing else will change. Ken is a super cool money and happiness expert, a best-selling self-development author in Japan, and his book Happy Money is one that will forever be on my bookshelf, and if you haven't read it, now is the time. So when I was thinking about how to end this year on Everyone's Talking Money podcast and really get you prepared to be in a better relationship with your money, I knew you had to hear from Ken. So in this episode, Ken shares how to figure out what is enough for you so you aren't stuck in the belief that more is always better, how to redefine your relationship with money so you can bring in more ease and peace, and how to do the work to let go of your money fears for good. This is an episode you do not want to miss, my friend. Let's start talking. Well, Ken, it is such a pleasure to have you back on the show. Your episodes are always a fan favorite with our listeners. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Shana, for inviting me. I'm so happy to be on your show. We've had quite a year. We were kind of talking about this before we hit record, but 
worldwide, we've we've come out of these COVID restrictions. People are trying to get back into like a sense of normalcy. There is a pending recession here in the U.S. Uh, we've got the global workforce changing, super high inflation kind of all around the world. I mean, everything is just not looking great. So it really makes sense that money is one of our biggest causes of fear, anxiety, and stress. But from your point of view, you know, what causes us, Ken, the most stress and fear around our money? Shana, I think it's our emotions that do all, all the work. So it's not the money. So, you know, when money has uh, a voice, uh, it would say, oh, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's you guys' fault. Because we associate so much pain, uh, emotional negativity around money. So it's not exactly the money. It's uh, it's a future you worry about. It's not the money. You're worrying about the future without any money. That's what's killing killing us, not the money itself. How come, though, we get so sidetracked? I mean, there are so many experts out there that talk about you know, just throwing another spreadsheet in front of you or another budgeting app or whatever it might be. But not a lot of people are having these important conversations, like you say, where we're talking about the emotions behind money. Like, wh- why is this not something that um, we're okay having conversations about? I think it's because we tied up with our own survival. Uh, 300 years ago, everyone, everybody was making uh, our own food, except some, you know, uh, kings and royal families. So uh, about a hundred years ago, everybody started to move to the city, and in the city, people don't grow veggies and food. So we had we had to buy food, we had to pay for the rent. So everything ev- uh, involved money. About a hundred years ago. So since our grandparents or grand grandparents. We are uh, started to get sucked into this uh, capitalism. So, uh, if you have no money, no life. That gives us a lot of scary feelings. So, uh, when we have uh, short uh, uh, shortcomings with um, money, we worry for our survival. So it's like a um, very um, uh, deep our um, human. Um, nature. Like, like survival. Yeah, survival right? mechanism. So it's like fight or flight mode. Once you are in it, um, your actions and your emotions are not logical anymore. Mm. Wow. It's it's so interesting, I think, when you start to like peel back all of the layers. And I love what you're talking about, too. I feel like there is this energy around money and in a lot of it the last couple of years with just everything going on in the world i feel it it's changing quite a bit tell me about the the energy of money and like what what do we need to know about um just even our own energy around money right so you know we do something in exchange for money so when when we um when we spend money we feel some part of our body parts are ripped off. That's how we feel energetically. Mm. So if you are um, uh, working hard and uh, say you're making 20 or $30 per hour, so if you're paying for something that's cost, that costs $30, you feel like your, your life force energy of one hour gets ripped off. So you're thinking, uh, is this worth my one hour time? So uh, that's when we feel a little stingy about money. If we, um, I don't want to let go of my life. So we, um, we take it very carefully, uh, either this uh, $30 thing or service is worth it. And most of the times we feel very expensive. We, we feel something is expensive because uh, it's, we feel it's more than, well, it's less than, uh, what we worked for. Right, right. So we feel uh, it's not fair. You know, I think my precious time is more, uh, more, more valued. That's why we feel upset. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And I also think that um, there's probably a lot that we don't know about our energy around money. I'm just thinking about kind of my own evolution. And many, many years ago, when I was a practicing certified financial planner and I would work with people and I would always say, 
you know, why aren't they making the changes that they hired me to to make? Like, why are they repeating patterns? Like, what is happening here? And it was really when I started to discover my own relationship with money, but then also see how people kind of just stay stuck in these patterns and they don't even know how to to escape them. And I think one of the most fundamental questions that you can ask yourself is, how do you feel about money? How, how do you feel about that question? Like, I feel like there's a lot of information that you can uncover. Right. So uh, what a lot of people uh, get surprised after reading my book or listening to me. Uh, money is not just numbers. Money is more of a relationship. So that's why people repeat the same pattern. You know, um, some people, some of your friends are into abusive relationships. And right after you get out from one abusive relationship, she or he goes to the other, another one. Right. It's because you have this uh, mold almost in you that attracts a certain relationship. And money is the same thing. Uh, money is a relationship. So if you are in sacrifice, you tend to attract all the dramas that you go, you have to go into sacrifice. So unless you change what's inside, outside cannot be changed. That's why I use a lot of Zen mechanism, uh, because a lot of uh, our issues are running automatically, subconsciously. So you have to really uh, come from a different approach. Numbers will not solve the problem. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about your Zen philosophy and like how we can borrow some of that for our own relationship with money. In short, you have to ask yourself, when is enough? Because um, a lot is happening in the world and uh, um, so many messages outside the uh, world is more more, more. So we are brainwashed to, to, to do more in the uh, short time, shortest possible time. So we think more is better, the faster the better. But uh, um, where are we going? <laughs> where are we going <laughs> so fast? Right. And, uh, and so uh, I was in New York for a few days, uh, actually last month, and everybody walks so fast, talk so fast, so I grabbed my friend, where are you going? <laughs> uh, but uh, people don't know. You know, they're going fast because everybody else is going fast. So that's the attitude we have. So you have to ask yourself, why am I in a hurry? And where am I going? So by asking these questions, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. So um, instead of making your income grow, um, you have to go the different direction. You have to satisfy yourself with what you have because that's what happiness is. So excitement tells, um, ad adrenaline tells you uh, to do more, to, to go faster. But also, if you want to be happy, um, you have to calm yourself down and find your own satisfaction and peace within. And I feel like at least the last couple of years, I'm curious about uh, your um, experience living overseas, living in Japan. But I know in the US that a lot of people have used the last couple years as a moment to pause and think, wait a minute, is, is this the life I want to be living? I mean, there's a study after study of just record number of people in, here in the US leaving their careers, they might not know exactly what they want to do, but they just know they can't do what they did before. They don't want that version of their life. And so I'm just thinking about how people are really in this place right now where they're trying to figure out what do I want and what does money mean to me and what is the vision I want for my life? Of course, we wouldn't want a whole global pandemic to be the impetus for us to, to stop that. But I'm curious about, you know, over in Japan, have you been experiencing that same sort of just kind of cultural shift around money? Yes, indeed. And I think uh, we're going to the right direction uh, because um, a few years ago, we are forced to work so hard for nothing. And uh, <laughs> so we're just, we, we knew how to stop and we knew uh, how to slow down. 
without our will, you know, uh, we had to do that because of the pandemic situation. But then everything uh, starts moving. Um, but a part of us knows um, how how we felt when everything is so slow, and so we are in the process of figuring out what to do uh, as an individual. And also, we are in the process of uh, how to deal with others uh, internationally. That's how um, some parts of the uh, region are opening up, yet other parts are closing down. Like in China and Russia, uh, they're um, uh, practically they've closed uh, up their border, and uh, other countries are uh, opening up, but still very very uh, carefully. So we are entering into a very interesting uh, economic crisis and also um, international crisis. So we have to ask ourselves, can we cooperate together? We didn't do it so well last time, um, 80 years ago. So we are giving us the third opportunity, a third chance to do it right. So I think we are going into an interesting uh, time that... um, uh, we're we're going to be tested whether we'll do we'll go through this together or just we will fall apart. Mm, what do you think is going to happen? I think internationally there will be a lot of conflict and also chaos. But in about five years, I think we're going to figure out uh, ways to start uh, start over, and then I think we'll come up with some kind of uh, international. Uh, financial system uh, to just start some start everything new. So we'll be probably given a new opportunity. Uh, so um, I think everybody will feel uh, we'll, we'll be given a start fresh, uh, a fresh start. So um, we can we can do everything right. So I'm very excited because I, that's what I've been uh, talking about uh, for the past five years. So I'm not just talking about happy money. Uh, I'm talking about the fair life um, that uh, gives you uh, so much satisfaction and joy. And our current financial system doesn't seem to offer that kind of uh, joy uh, for everybody, unfortunately. So five years is a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, tell me a little bit more, like what, like what do you think actually needs to change in the, in the financial system? Like how do, we, h- how do we bring about a more fair and equal system? You know, what, what was funny almost 20 years ago, when I, I spent a couple of years for my daughter's education. So I moved to Boston for a year. Um, and then... Uh, my daughter didn't speak a word of English, and the first English sentence she she picked up uh, during her very very first day, um, she asked me. Everybody was saying this. Uh, Can you tell me what it means? And she and she said, "It's not fair." You know, all the kids, all the American <laughs> kids, kept saying, "It's not fair. It's not fair." Everybody says that, and I guess uh, I think in North America, the most important thing is. Uh, fairness, you know, <laughs> since Abraham Lincoln, I guess. Right. And yes. so, but uh, the people, why uh, kids are, are telling um, each other it's not fair, it's not fair, is that uh, life is not fair. You know, especially in North America, uh, the, the wealthy ones are getting uh, wealthy so fast, and the financially challenged people are uh, suffering so fast, so bad. So, uh, in a co- uh, country like that, uh, it's so hard to keep a uh, sanity where everything like medical right. expenses and uh, gas prices are rising. Uh, people are just threatened uh, for survival. And I don't want to criticize, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, other countries like uh, politics, but I, I visited um, Northern Europe and other countries and the uh, medical system. Uh, some countries, um, uh, Everything is free. And in Japan, it's sort of in mid- middle. But the other day, I, I went to a dentist. And you know how much I paid? It's only $8. Ugh, and, jealous. So in North America, if you go to a dentist, can you can you leave a dental office with without paying like a few hundred dollars, right? 
It's very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, and also, I went to、um, you know a, other doctor and just got a little、uh, little medication, and it was only like thirteen dollars. You know, it's not it's one three dollars. You know, you can、uh, you cannot probably pay for the lunch in North America. So、uh, <laughs> it's because of the Medicare system. You know, so、uh, if you are、um, in your your own country, you never know what other people are getting. So I think if、uh, American people are finding out about、uh, other Uh, you know, system.、Um, they'll probably say it's not fair. You know, Australians and British,、uh, they're not. They don't have to pay for the college. You know, the government picks up the bill,、uh, so、uh, you don't have to go into a, a deep debt、uh, just for going going to college. So、uh, I think、uh, American kids go into survival mode when they're when they hit like fourteen and fifteen. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news: as you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news: well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic, and it was so time-consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch, and I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner, and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top-rated all-in-one personal finance app.、It、gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com/etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful. Ad-free and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com/etm. That's m o n a r c h m o n e y dot com/etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood: The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to go、uh, go to higher to get higher education, you are going to feel a lot of stress because you don't want to put your parents、right. into a lot of stress. So this is welcome to capitalism.、Uh, so <laughs> you know、um, we feel、uh, the system isn't right, but still at the same time,、uh, it's hard to change as an individual. Just as we're talking, I mean, there's there's so many layers, and it's it's like a deep understanding as to why a lot of us aren't happy in our lives, and certainly not not happy with our money.、Um, one of the things you talk about, you say that、um, when we earn or spend money, we do so either with love or fear, and I've I've just spent a lot of time really thinking about that and like how powerful that is, and and how we don't think about that when we when we do spend money, but. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about that, like the relationship between love and fear.、Mm-hmm. So it's not just about the money; it's how you relate to life.、Um, if you are loving and generous pe-、um, person, you look at the world through the lens of love. But unfortunately, most of us are living in fear. So, for example, a neighbor or strangers could do any、uh, could do some harm for you. So that's because you are in fear,、um, and unfortunately, I felt that、uh, that a lot in, in big cities in in modern world. 
But、um, it's because we are living in fear. So once you go into this fear mode, it's once again flight or fight or flight、uh, mode. So you cannot spend、um, money joyfully. You cannot receive money joyfully. So everything、um, about life you do th-、uh, through fear. So the fear,、uh, what's what's bad about it is it's contagious and it grows in you. So it's going to eat up a lot of your peace、um, in, in your heart, and、um, it it,、yeah. it goes down to the generation. If you're fearful, your kids will be also fearful too. So how do you like if you recognize that you're operating in this space of fear? How do you practically work to change that to bring in more peace? Yes, that that's a that's a very that's the million dollar question. Yeah, very good question, Shana.、Um, I think the first key is、um, imagine there will be another world that、um, you know you can live through love, and I think the easiest way is to appreciate what you have already. Your friendship and、um, the generosity your friends have, or parents, and even a little tiny thing that people show to each other, and if you have enough uh, feelings, um, positive feelings in you, it's gonna fill up your heart, and then it overflows. So you have to start counting、um, positive energy in you in your life, and you have to increase your positive energy. By making money with love and appreciation, and sp- spending money with love and appreciation.、Mm, right. It's it's almost so simple, and yet so many of us just kind of stumble over it and, and don't do it practically every day. But when you think about it, right? It's it's just simple. Yes, it is. That's what I teach, and one appreciation leads to another. And then it's like、uh, it's it's a, it's going to be a game changer.、Um, without just、um, noticing, you are going to start looking、um, life,、uh, looking at life with、uh, eyes of love. And once you are in this love mode,、uh, you are going to attract a lot of great people.、Um, you know, I've seen so many. Uh, great people in North America、um, uh, about twenty years ago,、uh, no, thirty years ago. I I spent one year depending on total strangers in in North America, and people so generous to to let me stay at their home. So I still believe in American、um, generosity and、uh, positivity and hospitality. So if you're open to those,、um, there are millions of Americans. Who are、uh, generous and happy to support you? So,、uh, you know,、um, uh, which world do you want to open up to? Loving one or fearful one? It's up to you.、Mm, I like that. That、uh, it it really is our choice. And you you've been on this show a couple times before. You are a happiness and money expert. You're author of one of my favorite books, Happy Money. Uh, I'd love for you to tell the listeners who maybe haven't heard your story、mm. before. Tell us a little bit about your journey in into money, happiness, and how you how you ended up finding peace with your relationship with money. Yeah, I've written more than thirty、uh, or fifty books on happiness and money, so I'm going to make it very short. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was born into a, a very unique family. My father was a tax accountant. So money, money was not a taboo in in our house. So he started teaching me about money since I was five or six. So I,、um, it's almost like an elite education for money. So by、uh, the age fifteen or seventeen, I thought I could be financially independent by the end of my t- my twenties, which I did. So I retired for four years、um, uh, for my baby girl. And、uh, during the semi-retirement, I came up with this idea:、um, What if I wrote a book on happy happiness and, and and money? People can benefit from my book, and and I, that's what I did. And it's exactly twenty years ago, and、um, since I started writing my first book,、wow. and、um, I became an author, 
And since then, I've been publishing a book in every two months. So it's crazy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. My gosh. Do you sleep ever? <laughs> I, I, I write very fast. And oh, that's Yeah.、Funny. So I don't, I, I don't need to correct、uh, what, I, what I write. So I've seen Mozart、um, uh, uh, just. Uh, download the music and he never uh, um, writes uh,、mm. back. So I don't, I don't use backspace button as much as other authors. That's why I can write fast. <laughs> I love it. So through this process of, of writing all these books,、uh, I would imagine that it also really evolved your relationship with money and maybe helped you come to a greater.、Uh, Sense of peace. Yes, indeed. So I already had enough financial security in my early 20s. So I haven't really worried about money for the, my, for the last three decades. But I've been helping uh, people um,、uh, reconcile with money and also find peace with money. So personally, I have taught about what,、um, 50, 60, 70,000 people in person. And uh, uh, I, I do talk to big groups. So if I count those people, there will be、uh, a million people who have been impacted by my work. And I've been、uh, in the morning when I wake up, I usually have like five or ten、um, uh, messages saying, Ken, thank you for this. And they share a little bit of their life in the email. That's how I start my day. And、uh, by looking at the impact I've given people, Uh, people、uh, totally get it, like、uh, how,、um, how, how, how they can have their new relationship with money, which is a healthy and somewhat distant relationship. It's not just、uh, in, a, in a very abusive relationship,、uh, you or he or, or, he or she gets entangled. So you don't know,、uh, you cannot really separate yourself. But if money was a best friend, Uh, you know, he'd be there when you need him or her, but you don't usually, you know,、um, get stuck in this codependent relationships. Wow, that's so powerful. I, I often talk to people about this idea of like falling in love with your money, and people look at me a little sideways, like, we're not supposed to love our money. And I, I think, no, actually, you are supposed to have that kind of relationship where. Like you're saying, you are best friends. And it's, I would imagine that it, it, it does a lot, even just neurologically in our heads, to kind of change the way we, we view money. Yes, yes. So, you know, it, it's great to love money and it's great to be loved by money. But,、um, you know, a lot of people become like stalkers, you know? Yes, exactly. You have to make sure. <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah, you have to make sure. <laughs> Uh, you have to be loved by money. You know,、uh, the feeling, feelings have to be mutual. <laughs> exactly right. We have to create a healthy relationship. <laughs> yes, it's not like a codependent relationship. So、uh, yes. I think the best way, in a sense,、um, is just forget about money in everyday life because money will be there when you need it. So,、um, everyday life, you should not think about money. Mm, I like that. Like, that's a totally different perspective and a really interesting way、uh, to think about money. I, as you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I recently became、um, a certified trauma of money specialist and did a lot of、uh, studying and work on how trauma、uh, impacts our relationship with、mm -hmm. money. And a lot of times we don't even know that trauma is there, either from relationships or ancestors. Um, or even just our, our thinking around money. So, for anyone listening who's maybe stuck in a place of, of trauma, you know, how do we move through some of those really intense emotions around money so that they don't get in the way of, of creating a better future? Yeah. So,、um, I think you can start from everyday life. So, when you want to do something, you feel like,、mm, I don't have the money, you know. So, that, that, that right there, you see. You're limited by certain beliefs. So you can,、um, you can ask yourself, why do I feel this way? Or why did I come to think this way? So you can probably start remembering what happened when you're five or ten. You can even come up with、um, 
uh, some scene which may not be real, but you can, uh, you remember what happened back then, and you give another alternative uh, by saying, oh, you can, you, you can bike, uh, you can get the bike, you know, you can go to a ballet re- lessons or whatever that is. And then you feel like, hmm, maybe I can, you know, go on, uh, go on. So I have to come up with creative ideas to make my dreams come true. Uh, so the other day I went on, uh, on a world tour. I started from Tokyo to Helsinki, Finland, Stockholm, New York, LA, Brisbane, Australia, and back. Uh, a lot of people think of going around the world, but they don't do it actually. <clears throat> because they were afraid of money. So you, if you want to do it, you can go ahead. Your best friend will take care of, of the rest. I like that. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking about like, my gosh, like how much, how much freedom would we all have if we really had that kind of relationship with our money? And then from that freedom, right, the, we have the power to to really create the lives that we want to live. And I'm thinking of so many people that just kind of stay stuck and don't know how to get out of these patterns or don't ha- know how to change their thinking and, um, you know, just ultimately aren't happy in life. Like, w- what would the world look like, right, if we all had this healthy relationship with money? Yes. So, um, you know, to come up with, with a few um, I thought it would be great if we have a, a like a hotel so people can stay and gather and just look at many issues and then we become like families, you know. So um, yeah. about 10, 11 years ago, I bought a, a hotel um, in, a, 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 in, the, in a forest outside of Tokyo. Um, so uh, we're going to do a retreat uh, next month uh, using the facility. So uh, all, the, all the dreams I had in my head, it's, it was fantasy like 12 years ago. <laughs> but, you know, money helps you to buy. Money <laughs> helps you to refurnish all the, all, you know, all the buildings. So money helps you to just um, um, print books. Money helps you to just put you on the airplane. So uh, if money was your best friend, what would you ask you know, uh, um, your best friend. And so please don't stop and please don't feel limited because of money. Because money is going to flee you. Not to, um, money is not there to imprison you. Mm. Wow, so powerful. And, and Ken, I'm, I'm curious, we're kind of rounding out the year here. And, you know, I'm wondering if there are any like rituals or traditions or even anything you do in, in Japan that really help exercise like letting go of whatever happened this year if if there's negative things that have happened with our money this year that we want to just kind of release so we can um you know step into the new year fresh and clean and like ready to embody this new relationship with money are there are there any rituals or traditions that you have that you can share with us right at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh at the eve of the year or also new year's you go to a shrine and uh, you know put your money. Could be a dollar, could be ten dollars. Some people uh, throw away ten thousand uh, yen, which is about hundred dollars, into a box at the shrine, so money can be cleansed, and then new money will be sent back to you. That's how we believe. So uh, some people think more the better. So they they put <laughs> they put hundred dollars in a box, which kind of like surprised me. So. Uh, you know, I think you can do it in America too. Just put a dollar or ten dollars in a box at the supermarket for some kind of fundraising. Uh, let go of your money, and then in, my, in in your imagination, the money gets cleansed, and then it'll uh it'll be back. It'll bring back a lot of friends <clears throat> with the money, totally cleansed and happy. So um, just donate some money, uh, even if, if it's a little bit. You know, if uh, because that makes you feel that you have more than enough. Isn't Ken amazing? <laughs> I mean, listening back to this interview myself, I'm just reminded that it is possible to bring in more peace and ease when dealing with money. But I am just like you. I have so many moments when I get fearful or stressed about money, and it's just hard to think about anything else. 
And in those moments, I really try to go back to Ken's words and think about what is enough, what I'm truly grateful for, and just remind myself that society wants me to believe that I need more, but I can choose to do something different. And I think the beauty of Ken's words is that he isn't saying you can't make a lot of money or denying that money gives you options and access. But what he is saying is that your relationship with money is far more important than the numbers because the numbers, they can just come and go very easily. So my wish for you is that 2023 will bring you nothing but peace and ease. And even though there's a lot going on in the economy, you don't have to get caught up in the scarcity and fearful thinking. So put this episode on repeat, do yourself a favor, listen to it a few times, and then send it to 10 friends so they can bask in Ken's wise words as well. If you want to learn more about Ken, you can go to his website, kenhonda.com. He even started an English-speaking community called Arigato Community, and you can learn more about it on his website. Or you can grab a copy of his book, Happy Money, everywhere books are sold. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor. Like I mentioned, send this to 10 friends right now. Tell them, hey, do yourself a favor. Listen to this episode. As always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guests, as well as the sponsors who truly make this podcast possible to do every single week. I'll see you back here in a few days for some new episodes. (music) 